Hey, welcome to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy. Today, I'm doing a new video called Now I Want It. So this is, this is the experience, right? You go to someone's house, you play a game, maybe you play it on Tabletop Simulator, and as soon as you play that one time, you say, Now I Want It. This is what happened to me with Adrian's Wall. I played this with a group of friends, and I knew instantly that I was going to have to get this game. So I came home to my local game store. Shout out to Gamers Haven. Uh, link in the bio and uh, I picked up this game and it's a lot of fun and so that sparked this idea of well what other games have I played recently that I could say now I want it so here's my list right I'm gonna give you five games I'm gonna cruise through these pretty quickly and put in the comments if you have played them if you have them and if you want to buy them as well all that kind of stuff so game number one is Kemet blood and sand I played this game twice now and I both times I played it the next few days I've been thinking about other strategies and other ways that I could have won the game. I actually played the older edition, but with the newer rules, and I love the new rules. They are great. The miniatures are amazing on this game. This is a uh, soldiers on the map kind of thing, but you got to get to eight, ten victory points, something like that, and the first person to do it wins. There's a ton of different ways that you can do or get those victory points, and there is a like a almost like a tech tree, but it's not. It's like powers that you could get, and once somebody snags one of those powers, nobody else can get it. So it's this race to get this cool thing. But if they do take it, it's okay because there are a ton of different abilities that you could get they all feel super powerful and super cool and so it makes me want to go back to the game and play it again and say I wonder if I got that ability that he had that time or I remember when she played that one thing that's really cool let me get that and see what that does really interesting game with a lot of play in the box so I want to get it it's Kemet Blood and Sand Second game is Project L. This is a game that I will buy to play with my wife, my in-laws. It is a light polyomino game with these cool plastic pieces of polyomino. So it's not cardboard, but plastic polyomino pieces that fit into dual layer cards. And it's very simple to understand. Just on my turn, I get a piece and I slot it into that. Once I complete the shape, I get points and I get a new shape, and I don't lose the shapes that I use to make that card. I add them, I get them back, and I add them. So it's kind of like an engine builder in that I'm uh, collecting all of these pieces, and now I look out onto the board and I try to figure out what new cards I can complete with the pieces that I have, and I get that, I get a new piece, and it keeps going maybe 20 minutes at the max once you know the game 20 30 minutes it's a very fast moving game but very satisfying in that i get all these pieces and i keep building this little engine really enjoyed it definitely going to pick that up if you have family that loves azul it kind of feels like in that same realm to me of uh complicatedness it's not that complicated so they could get it and then enjoy it so project l the third one another polyomino game is called isle of cats and the first thing i'll say about this game is i was shocked at how big the box was i was thinking polyomino game you know little tiny box maybe about this size way bigger than that a ton of stuff in the box the boat that you get is like this big there's just tons of cards like the stack of cards is like this big and uh, i remember when we first started playing i was like there's no way we're gonna go through all those cards you go through all those cards in the game. It is just crazy. But the basic idea is you're trying to rescue these cats, put them on your boat, and you score points in all kinds of ways. And each game it's going to change because in that large stack of cards, there are public and private goals. And so during the game, you are going to be drafting cards and then you get to keep cards and then you put them out onto the board and that'll tell you what goals are going to be played this round. And then those cards also give you abilities for recruiting or uh, attracting, catching these cats that you're then going to put on your boat. And then the way that you place them out on the boat all depends on the goals that you're trying to accomplish. There's There are goals like the largest group of this color or put all the cats in this one room or put the cats not in this one room. There's just all different kinds of ways to score points. And uh, I really, really enjoy it. Um, the only negative that I saw to the game is that it does get complicated in, uh, in the setup because every round you're putting out so many cats, you're dealing out so many cards, the draft phase. But I think if you divide up all those 
those abilities. You know, hey, can you put out the cats this round? I'm going to do the cards. Okay, everybody's got their cards. Go. I think the more you play this game, the quicker it will be. But your first play of this game, it's kind of deceptive because it looks like it'd be this light game. And it is lighter, but uh, it does take a little bit of time to get your way through it. But at the end of it, I said... Now I want it, and uh, I really liked it. It's an Isle of Cats. Uh, the next one is, I'm kind of cheating here because it's not a game that you can go pick up at your local game store, but the reason I bring it up is that it was on Kickstarter and it didn't make it, and so they canceled it, and now they're going to relaunch it. And I wanted to mention it because uh, it was such a fun experience to me that I think that it is worth picking up or backing on Kickstarter. So when it comes back out, I'm going to make sure that I back this game because I really enjoyed it. And it's called Collab. This is a game with an, such a cool, quirky, science, mad scientist kind of feel where you are trying to build this tableau of cards and score points. And you do that by taking dice that you have collected and putting them out into different regions around the board. And the reason it's called Collab is because the, the, the benefit, how much stuff you get out of going to a location, is not only on the card, the die that you played out, but also the dice that your opponents have placed out. So there's this really cool ebb and flow to the game of once a whole lot of people are going to this region, you get a whole lot of stuff. But slowly that region will die out because people will have to move their dice and place them in another location. And that is really cool to watch it get really powerful and then weaken as time goes on. And so different regions of the board are going to give you better benefits throughout the game. Really enjoy it. Uh, the artwork is super quirky and fun. It's great. I loved it. And so next time it comes out on Kickstarter, please back it or at least check it out. Okay, the last game that I want to talk about is Golem. This came out at Essence. I didn't get to play, I didn't get to go to Essen, I wish, but um, I did get to play an early copy of this with Ryan from Man vs. Meeple. He brought it and we played through and I fell in love with this game. If you have played Grand Austrian Hotel, but you wish that it was meatier and crunchier and had more to keep track of, that is Golem. So Golem has this really amazing Jewish rabbi theme where you're building these golems and um, on your turn you choose one of the abilities that are out there. You do that thing and then there is just so much to keep track of and it kind of has that end game uh, Stone Age feel where there's like a lot going on but you have multipliers for each one of these things that you've been working on. There's like four or five different tracks that you could score points on but you can't you can't win in all of them, so you kind of have to do one or two of them really well uh, in order to win the game. I just really liked it. The, the theme is great. The The mechanisms are super solid, and, and I just loved having to keep track of all of this stuff. And there are ways to accomplish what you want in the game, which is so satisfying, is there is a lot of player um, uh, choices that you get to make on your turn of, okay, I could go here, which would give me this, what that will allow me to do that thing over there oh somebody went there first well let me change how I'm going to do that okay I could still do it if I do this instead I really like when games give you that kind of uh, you can breathe a little and kind of do some stuff it doesn't feel as on the rails I really like this game and I'm going to pick it up it is a little bit heavier but I think you could get even a medium crowd could probably dive into this and really enjoy it and so I like it it's great I can't wait to pick it up that's my list. That is five games and now I want. I played it and now I want it. And uh, so let me know if you played any of these games, if you would like to pick them up as well, or maybe if you've played it and you didn't like it. I would love to know that as well. Maybe I'll get that'll get me going on my series. Glad I played it. And uh, we'll kind of add that one to the show. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching the Board Game Closet. We'll see you next time.